All right, what's going on, YouTube? Sorry for the delay on videos. Um, been a little busy with, um, besides life, because, you know, that's not important. That's never important. I've been a little busy with, um, well, life <laughs> and, um, just all around other, other, other things, being tired a lot and exhausted. So I'm sorry for the delay on the video output. Um, lack of video output, I suppose I should say. Anyways, so sorry for that, truly. But we are back, and I think this one's worth the wait. Um, it's AI. We're, we're, we're going to just dive right into the AI. Um, this uh, is probably going to be a pretty long episode because AI isn't a short and quick thing. And learning this, if you watch that demo video, the one where I displayed this little project and goof off with this um, well that did not take a short amount of time so uh, as you can see I have that window open so I can reference it so I don't screw up severely um, but let's get into it so first of all um, and I should state this now that we're not going to cover everything but we're going to cover the basics we're going to get them to walk around and um, and uh, just be a good behaving AI for now. The next episode, we'll probably get into them shooting and looking at us. Uh, we may get into them looking at us in this episode, but um, don't be surprised if everything isn't handled in this episode. So, uh, let's simply get into it right off the bat by... Um, I, I've created on my other project, on my other project, yeah, a, a folder called Miscellaneous. I don't want to create it there. I want to create it in content. Uh, and I always do that. I always, always do that. So go to content, add new folder called Misc for Miscellaneous. And uh, this will just store some random stuff that we haven't designated to a place yet. I had put um, a customized muzzle flash in, here, in that folder and some other stuff. Just random things that I was kind of working on. Um, so let's uh, get into the uh, beginning of how we're going to set up the AI. And um, I was thinking about doing uh, stuff with blueprints. And I decided, you know, I don't think I need to make anything with blueprints. So let's let's not make anything with blueprints. But what I did do is um, I went ahead and I, I believe I copied the um, the existing AI demo that I had. But you're like, well, how how do I make that AI? Well, uh, I copied the um, our player. So let's uh, drag our player to miscellaneous and copy here. Okay, so we have him copied, and let's uh, hit F2 while we'll have him selected. I'm just gonna call him um, new AI. Um, I'll I'll delete the other AI and stuff later. Just I just don't need to throw that in the video. It just wastes a couple seconds. Anyways. So with uh with this created, we're gonna want to create some other things alongside him. We're gonna want to create a controller, and uh, we're gonna want to create actually uh, along with the controller his own weapon. And I'll, we'll explain that in the next video when we actually get him to shoot. But let's open him up right now, and we've got to sort some things out before we can even. Uh, throw him in the project. So I thought I'd sort this stuff out now um, before we get into some other stuff. So we need to sort, like I said, we need to sort this stuff out before we throw him into the project because once again, he is literally the duplicate of the character that we control, except this guy doesn't uh, um, isn't controlled by us. He's supposed to be our AI. He just has some of the functions that we do. So we can right off the bat uh, save some processing power by deleting zooming. 
um, interaction button pressed. We'll save switch weapons in, in case we set that up later, but I highly doubt it. Uh, you can delete some of this other stuff, but it doesn't really matter. Um, one thing, though, is we're not going to, we want to detach everything that's uh, from the equipped weapon. We don't want to um, delete necessarily anything from the equipped weapon, like pickup weapon, all of this can be deleted. So let me just highlight the entirety of pickup weapon and pickup weapon 2 and delete that friendly bunch because we don't need him picking up weapons. Um, we also don't need him switching between auto and semi-auto. Um, we the firing will save, but uh, let's hold off on that for just a second. Uh, also, um, since we don't have an equipped weapon set yet, we're gonna get a lot of errors with it because it's gonna try and reference some things from the equipped weapon. But since it's not properly set and we don't have it spawned in, well, we're not gonna get that equipped weapon. Um, the jump input, um, we don't we don't want any of his movement input. We don't because um, uh, this is these are all Im movement inputs. We don't need these, and we don't need crouching. We don't need jumping. Uh, because it's that's for the player side of things. Uh, the summon bullet will do that, but we don't want them summoning. Uh, we don't want them summoning from um, the. Uh, sorry, uh, we don't want them summoning from the weapon that he's got now. So we're not gonna we're not gonna throw any of that in. Um, so right now uh, he should not have an equipped weapon, um, and nothing will be spawned in for him. So he's. He's pretty bare bones, uh, to be honest. Uh, he doesn't have a lot to go off of in terms of, say, um, uh, let's. Um, he doesn't have a lot of go off of uh, in terms compared to what we have to go off of. Uh, some of this could probably be deleted too and and fixed and rearranged. But uh, regardless, we'll we'll fix some of this. So um, we're gonna want to, there's some there's plenty more editing to be done here. But uh, as of now, let's just go and create. A uh, controller for him. So let's right click and go to AI. No, sorry. Let's go to Blueprint Class, All Classes, Search AI Controller, and just grab the AI controller that we have right here. So select the AI controller, select that, and name it. Uh, let's just call it NPC uh, Controller. Controller. Now, if you don't, <clears throat> if you don't know, NPC means non-playable character. So, if you want somehow the player to be able to control your AI in in some weird game mechanic that you have going on, uh, say um, mild spoilers for this if you haven't played or watched gameplay for Inside and are kind of holding off on that. Um, kind of in the mechanic of Inside in the game Inside where you can control the zombies. Um, those are technically not NPCs because uh, you are able to control them and play as them in a sense. So if you want your AI um, to be playable or whatever, I wouldn't suggest calling it NPC controller. I would leave that for the literal NPCs. I would uh, call this, you know, something else like a controllable AI or whatever it is that you um, want. So it's, a, it's a controllable controller. Why not? But the controller doesn't do too many things. Uh, in a sense, a controller is kind of just like a, um, a connection point. It's it's kind of like a bridge, kind of like casting is a bridge between th this. Uh, controllers uh, are um, have their own little functions and you can do more research about controllers uh, if you think they could be useful to you or just want to learn about them. As you can see, for AIs, they have path following components. 
and different things that make sense to put in a AI controller. It's just kind of a, a second brain per se. Um, you don't always necessarily need a controller, but controllers allow you to do a lot more things. Usually the more stuff you have, the more things you can do as a general rule in coding and Unreal Engine. So uh, with this uh, controller, we actually aren't going to be doing too much with the controller, I'm going to be honest and right off the bat and say we're probably going to open this, I think, uh, once. And this is the only time that we're going to open it. So we're going to create um, uh, one variable, I believe, if I need to make the second one, because I, I have two over here, but I think that second one is a mistake. So we just need to make one variable and call it C bro. Now, the reason that we're creating it on the controller um, and by the way, this is just uh, a, a kind of trigger to to communicate with other blueprints. Uh, say you wanted to use this in coordination with a uh, um, with other AIs to you know communicate with other AIs. Say, hey, does this NPC controller see the bro? And so it would just be communication factors. But um, no, this um, the reason I created it on here and I'm doing it now is just because I know it works on this project, so I'm doing it the exact same way. I may not necessarily need to, but I'm sure it'd help in the long run for those of you who know what you're doing just a little bit more with AI or whatever. But if you know what you're doing, maybe you wouldn't be watching this video. Anyways, Logic Ethan, remember that. <laughs> so back to the AI. Um, there's several things that you would actually need to to do in this real quick just to make it kind of simple so that way he does roam around uh, so let's let's just get that roaming mechanic done right now so his ro his bleh, his roaming mechanic is very very simple i could copy paste it over but i'm just not going to do that because i feel it mildly impractical um, just so I can show you guys how it's made. So let's just create a pin off of our tick. Why don't we? Um, I've got about six pins on my or on my sequence uh, on my other project. So I'm not going to necessarily make all six because I don't think all six are necessary, but maybe they will be. So just drag it off somewhere over here uh, in the distance because we're going to be doing a lot. And we're going to get a branch. Now, uh, this branch, as always, is kind of a yes or no. Just asking, hey, buddy, you, you uh, see what's going on here? Is this Is this stuff that's going on? Are we cool here. Um, oh, real quick, I forgot to set this up. We need to go to the new underscore AI, uh, which is your um, uh, your class defaults. You could click this or click class defaults. It doesn't really matter, but uh, auto-possess player needs to be disabled. Auto-possess AI needs to be placed in world or spawned um, for multiple reasons. Um, one is if you want an AI to just be there immediately in the world because you've placed them there, Sure, um, that's that you would do uh, place in world, but you'll have moments where you want AIs to respawn uh, because uh, you'll go into a room per se, and uh, and uh, just here's a scenario real quick. You go into a room and uh, you look around. There's no enemies. You go into another room, walk around the entire house or whatever for a bit, and uh, you come back to that room and there's enemies. Now, obviously, you can't have already placed them in that world because you went in there and they weren't placed yet, but you can spawn them, so it, you will want both AI or spawned because uh, if you don't do that, then you'll try and do a spawning mechanic, which, by the way, I've tried to do and I flipped out and I didn't understand why it wasn't working because all the blueprints were right, and the only thing I had to do was say, hey, auto-possessed AI needs to be placed in world or spawned. And then the AI controller, of course, needs to be the one we made called NPC controller. By the way, if you wonder why I didn't call it AI controller, is because the default AI controller that comes with Unreal Engine, this is the one that comes with Unreal Engine, uh, is called AI controller, so it's highly confusing. Um, but other than that, that is all we need to do on the... Um, AI side of things. So um, let's go on to that branch and uh, and get our uh, controller. Now um, we we I want to make a constant reference to the controller because we will be using uh, the controller a lot. I should have done this earlier, but the constant reference to the controller that we're going to be using. Um, 
let me let me delete the set ads cam local because we need this no longer. Uh, we actually don't need this either. Um, the the constant reference to the AI controller um, will be made much shorter if we just cast to it now because every time we reference it, we have to cast to the NPC controller. But once again, like I said, if we just do it now, we will be good to go for uh, a um, just constant basis. So get controller this one and. Uh, and we need to set it to two variables. So let's let's create a variable real quick called um, let's see uh, con if I could spell controller. And yes, I know I know that's a, a lyric to a song. What do you mean controller is used by another variable? It doesn't matter. I was gonna call it NPC anyways. Oh, it's used by uh, one of these variables probably um, I don't know so this of course needs to be in PC controller reference no wait 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 yes it does sorry I was questioning myself for a second reference to the NPC controller compile and let's alt drag once again if you don't remember alt drag is an automatic setting and control drag is an automatic uh, um, get by the way I think for you Mac users it's command drag uh, I'm not sure I've never used okay I take the back I've used Unreal Engine on Mac once and it was a piece of crap Mac and I deleted Epic Games launcher and Unreal Engine immediately after okay so um, now we need to set um, uh, let's see, sorry for the, all the, uh, 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 um, man, I need to, I need to quit doing the, uh, target is wet in the east, um, geez, quit doing it, Ethan, okay, and one last real quick thing that w I want to set is we need to get, <laughs> uh, I quit saying, uh, geez, this is ridiculous, bro dude, bro dude, bro dude. I mean, not cast, duh. I or not get. Uh, cast. I'm saying uh again. Everyone in the comment section is going to be like, quit saying uh, Ethan. Um, oh my god. I, I'm not even trying to. It is literal, like, straight up habit. Horrible, 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 horrible habit. Get our player pun. There, and we will be good. No, we won't be good. Sorry, I forgot. We need to promote this to a variable and just call it enemy because this is our enemy and we're going to reference him, I think, a couple times, so we'll just want to keep him there. Anyways, back to what we were doing that we kind of had to go off on that tangent, but it, of course it was all necessary. So let's uh, get C bro. Now, of course, nothing is actually setting this variable yet. But, of course, we will have something setting this variable. So, let's just connect uh, C, bro. Now, by default, this uh, will be false, which is proper. Um, but, jeez. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll set it later uh, with the, the visual, like the, the um, AI perception and the pawn sensing uh, multitask system that we've got going on. So let me just reference. Okay, so what we've got going on is if uh, the C bro condition is false, we're going to delay it. Now, the reason that we're going to delay it uh, right off the bat, and you're probably like, why, why are we delaying him walking around right off the bat? Well, it, it's easier to delay it off the bat now than having it go straight to the moving immediately then delay it later through a loop which is slightly more complex system than what I'm just about to do so the reason um, that we are delaying it at all this is the second reason for the delay the reason that we're delaying it at all like ever is because um, y if you don't have that uh, delay uh, between because 
right after this we're going to tell it to move around uh, and get the location. If you don't have the delay between moving around, he literally just like goes from point to point to point to point to point to point immediately, immediately after he's done moving to where he goes. So it's just like a guy who like who's moving around like there's no tomorrow. But with the with the delay, it's like he'll go to somewhere and you can put a delay between uh I, I would never put the minimum at zero because then it's just like he's going somewhere and then he moves somewhere again. Uh, you could put it 0.5, I guess, uh, to have a much minimal, much more minimal delay. But I put it at 1 to 3. I think it looks pretty fine. But he has the potential to go there, sit for literally a second, and move somewhere else. Or he goes there, sits for a couple more seconds, you know, and moves somewhere else. Um, and it's a good patrolling me patrol mechanic. And if you want him to be slower like he is patrolling, I would, by the way, put the default walk speed, the max walk speed here at, uh, say, 450 or 300. Um, I'm going to go with 450 just because I can. But uh, 300 is super slow, by the way. So with that, we're going to drag right off of the completed and get the AI move to node. Now, um, this may look familiar to those who have looked up other, um, uh, let me let me think of the word, tutorials on how to make AIs or, you know, how to make walking AIs or random generated patterns of movement for a AI or, or an object even. You could use this AI move to system for just a random object that you want to uh, move to a position, honestly. It, doesn't even have to be an AI, but uh, we want uh, to get self because this, of course, is referencing. Uh, the, it's it's asking for the pawn of the AI what we're moving, and so we are moving ourself, of course, and uh, ourself being the blueprint that we're in, and of course the destination will just be a random destination. So how we do that is get a random point in read or uh, sorry in navigable I, it's such a weird word navigable radius it just pretty much means well can you walk there okay you can okay any random point in that area that you can walk great okay so what that means in our world is if the nav mesh which is a mesh that we need, or which is a little bound box that we need to put around. I think I might already have it in here um, just because of the other. No, I don't. That's a good thing. I'll show you how to do that. You may have seen that. That's a very popular thing that you may have seen in other AI videos. Every AI has to have a nav mesh uh, just pretty much for operating, period. Um, well, not necessarily. Not if, like, it's an, not if it's an idle. Uh, mesh but it's n the point is null value so we need to get actor location because this is the origin um, of where where we're coming from you know we wouldn't want the origin I mean okay it's getting random point in navigable navigable re radius of this object so say it was a random point in origin of a building you only wanted the AIs walking around a specific building then you would use get random point in navigable radius and the origin would be that building the the origin of or an item around that building uh, at the base of the building so that way it wasn't say the origin of the building was at the top of it you know they can't walk around floating in the sky. So it could be something like that. But you can have a very generous radius as big as you want. If your world is very big and say you want any AI to go anywhere you want, then, you know, you might want to have a pretty big radius. But say you only want this AI, specific AI to be able to walk around in a specific area, well, you would want the radius pretty big, but you can use... Uh, filter classes for what nav mesh it's using. There's multiple different things, but I don't have that big of an area, so for safety reasons, I just threw in 2,000 or 20,000. It doesn't really matter. 
But that is all we need. I know I kind of drew it out, but I like to explain things because some people I know have complained about explaining things. If other people don't want things explained, then go ahead and skip ahead in the video because I, I understand the impatience of it all. But if you're one of the people who are new, want things explained, because once again, this is kind of a tutorial series for beginners that can also range to experienced people, just reminding you. So uh, we'll set up uh, the uh, if he the the true value later, but I'm gonna save all this up, and now let's actually get him to the point to where he can see us, because this is a very very important uh, point of the um, AI is can he see us? Can he not? So we're gonna create two things in his um, uh, not the well. Sure, components. Uh, two things in his components. One would be pawn sensing, and the other is AI perception. So those two things will kind of work with each other, and they will thus say, okay, uh, you see the guy? Okay, yeah, I do, but do you? Oh, you don't? Okay, well, I messed up. So they both, it's kind of like a check and check again kind of system, but they work with each other in the sense that, well, I see him, but are you physically seeing him in the world? It's, it's, there's more in depth into it that I don't need to go into. Google it, guys, if you want more ex explanation. But let's uh, hop on to pawn sensing and we need to throw around some settings. So uh, for his view radius, I threw in 75. It's not 100% realistic because in video games, it is fairly hard to properly replicate a human angle of vision because peripheral vision uh, and combined with uh, our normal foresight is very difficult to replicate and requires much more difficult coding and systems. So this is a very basic way if it doesn't look if it looks like he probably sees you but he doesn't register in the game uh, that's just because it's you know not a thousand uh, dollar AI system so like I said 75 is what I threw in there um, you will also want to narrow that sensing interval to a very very low radius if you want it to be realistic that 0.5 radius means every half second it will check it, it will check, which is um, not good because we want him when he's looking at us. We want that to be updated like one, two, three, four, like instantly. We need that to be him looking at us in real time, not every point five seconds. So that's all we need to change there in the pawn sensing. Um, we'll uh, throw an on C pawn in there, but we're gonna throw it where we want, not just where it puts it for us. Uh, so let's head over into AI perception, and here is where it gets a little bit more in depth. So the dominant sense, of course, is going to be sight. Uh, as far as I know, you can have multiple AI perceptions if you want him to have hearing and multiple things. Uh, for like a Metal Gear Solid kind of a hearing system, or a lot of the newer AIs that have, well, can both hear and see and uh, I'm sure some can smell. I don't know, because I think they've got smell. They've got touch and prediction and hearing damage. Anyways, I'm sure you could make a smell if you wanted. It'd be pretty weird, though. Anyways, so primary con... Uh, blah, 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 dominant sense sight. Now we need to add a sense config, and this one will be a sight config, which, if you don't know, config is configuration. So we need to configure our sight config. So... Uh, like I just did, you gotta expand the whole thing, and once again change some settings. So it's good to have these matching. So 75 and 75. Now uh, direction by affiliation, you're not gonna really need to change any of that. Now just because I have them all checked by, uh, or sorry, detection, not direction. Just because I have them all checked on the other project, I will do so on here. But that just means um, it it will register if you know an ally sees uh, an enemy, it will connect to that other ally that's far away and he'll kind of walk over there, whatever. It'll register as the sensing and then run whatever you have sensing it. It's You can do some pretty crazy things with detection by affiliation. It's pretty cool. It's just kind of like a hive mind, you know. Hey, I saw this guy, but you're on the other side of the map, so he's going to imaginarily radio over to the other guy, and he's going to come over. That's why when you alert one enemy in Metal Gear Solid, they pretty much will all know about you within a certain amount of time. <laughs> so, 
that with that we need to change um, only thing wait 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 no that is the only thing we need to change sorry I was losing it there for a second so now uh, we can start with making him look so let's get on pawn sensing so I'm just gonna make it somewhere over here I suppose uh, so we're gonna add an event event dispatchers and on C pawn now we already have been cast to our uh, enemy but we're gonna cast to him uh, again our bro dude um, which of course is our enemy to the AI and uh, we need to drag some stuff off of that but, but before we do that let's go a little bit below this click on your AI perception once again if you don't know why this didn't pop up if you just right clicked and that that little menu didn't pop up and all you see is select component to see available events and functions well that's pretty much telling you what you need to know select the component and then you can see it's available functions and events and functions so that's how you do that same thing for the AI perception we're gonna get here and call a function this time but believe this time we need to get uh, AI perception and then get perceived actors so this registers okay who are we seeing are we seeing that dog okay we don't need to worry about him we're, we're seeing we're seeing our ally okay we don't need to worry about him hey we're seeing like the only guy in the video game who looks different than every other creature. Okay, that has to be him. Of course, that's not how it log logically goes. It just realized, hey, we're picking up this specific actor with sight. So yes, change that sent to, sent to use or sense to use to sight. And the out actors is going to be utilized in a in a mildly strange way, I suppose. This is kind of just how I um threw it together so we need to promote it to a variable and I just simply called it uh, proceed proceed actors you may have seen me do this I believe I did this on the uh, AI fix for the RPG series <sighs> except of course this this AI that we're going to make here in this series is much more complex he'll look at us and shoot at us and uh, other stuff instead of just running up and swinging at us anyways I'm gonna call this perceived actors because it just makes sense it's it's checking what our perceived actors are and we're gonna tick this set and we need to add another another one excuse me so I'm I, I, I'm I'm just you know what I'm just gonna add a couple more what I have six seven I had six but we'll put seven on just in case because I like the number seven anyways so um, on C on pawns oh, let's see, okay sorry for the gibberish okay um, now uh, drag off of the perceived actors uh, this is all leading up to what we made here we're gonna all make it connect and on that we need to do contains item sorry for the muffled mic there for a second possibly I don't know if it was now this is asking okay does this contain a specific object uh, whoa did not want that does this contain a specific actor and the actor we want to know if it contains is the enemy now the perceived actors needs to be set to enemy it doesn't need to it can't be just any actor now of course we can add to this element and tell it okay uh, it automatically perceives this actor or that actor uh, it's actually um, going to register things that are already in the world to be honest so if we go to perceive actors we can um, get any actor that we have in the world but as you can see we can't see our player and some other stuff uh, we can uh, pick actor from scene which means um, we can pick the selected actor that we have so say we had our new AI in here and we um, went over here we could go down and hit our new AI or we could get our or we could get our bro um, but obviously we don't want to defaultly see him right off the bat we that's that's, that's not what we want we want to see him if we see him so the variable type uh, as far as I know should of course yes be an actor but uh, it's being contained or, or 
checking if it contains the enemy here. So let's connect uh, some fancy schmancy stuff here real quick. Let me delete something on my other project. And we need to get our controller PC, of course, some control dragging out. Um, and get or set Zebro. Now we're gonna connect it to that because we need to to uh, double check. Um, sorry, we need to double check all of this fancy stuff. So everything's going to be uh, um, checked and checked again, as you can see. This this system is is working fairly accurately. It's it's double checking. Hey, are we seeing? Are we not seeing? What's what's going on here? And if we are not seeing, then we are just walking around. Now, right now, he doesn't do anything if we see us, if he sees us. So uh, this stops, but so does uh, so does everything else. He literally just doesn't do anything. Um, so let's uh, let's save up the project. Hope the world doesn't blow up when I drag in an AI and hit play. So we're gonna go to miscellaneous, drag in the new a new AI, hit play, and he should start walking around soon, I believe. Oh, he he still has our UI up for some reason. Well, not for some reason. I know why he still has our AI our our UI up. I'll just have to delete delete that. Um, oh, that's weird. If I if I shoot it faces me forward, that must be a bug in my uh, in my my coding. I'll have to fix my recoil. Stuff isn't working properly. Oh, that was weird. Um, let's see what is breaking here. What is what's not working? What is the missing factor that is pretty much going to drive me crazy because uh, things aren't working. <laughs> um, see enemy. Um, well, let's let me see here. I'm the biggest idiot because I talked so much about it and I forgot. We need to go to volumes and uh, go to nav mesh bounds. Con just drag it in there and hit R. Scale it up. And here's the cool part. Hit P. Make sure it's covering everything. Looks like it's covering everything. Great. Hit play and he'll start walking around soon. There we go. Now I put a print on uh, true, it, it will true if he sees if he sees us. Now, see, he'll he'll reach his destination. Now he's reached his destination. And uh, when I was looking at when he was looking at me, he 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 wasn't doing anything. See, he snapped back real quick. As long as we're in his looking radius he'll almost immediately go somewhere else. But as of now, he's waiting a little bit. See, once I walked out of it, he, he just stopped. He just immediately stopped. So he doesn't want me in his line of sight uh, when, it, when, when it as, as concerns him walking around. So I don't know why I did that, but let's, uh, I feel like something's happening with this delay. I don't know. Um, that's weird, but, uh, that will be all for this episode. The, well, no, no, sorry. You know what? I'm going to throw in making him, uh, look at us real quick. So let's delete that print string. Let's delete that print string and we're going to get something called stop current movement keep path so let's drag this out and stop current movement keeping path yeah yeah okay we're going to connect that to true 
but all the way down on true, we are going to get, uh, well, not all the way down, I suppose. We can do it to the little left, uh, down and left, I suppose. We're going to set actor rotation. Set actor rotation. And the target, of course, is going to be self and the new rotation. We can right click it real quick and not that geez we can drag off of it sorry and make rotator I'm gonna delete this rotator that we did real uh, here and uh, let's let's um let's see how we wanna how do we want to play this um, let's let's drag back a while here and get actor location and let's get our enemy and get his actor location. And now we're going to combine these to get something called find look at rotation. It's really cool. It makes him look even though he's not moving towards us. Whereas the other, other AI in the... Um, RPG series, he doesn't use that. He just goes towards us, which automatically makes him look towards us. But this one, he keeps his current path while looking at us. Oh my gosh, technology. It's awesome. So we're going to uh, drag off this and break the rotator. And off of the rotator, we are going to connect the... Oh, that is all we have to do. I was confused with the other one that's much more long and extensive that's what someone said uh... so let's just get them here real close connect the z because this is that's the left right and, and that should be good now we'll add some stuff to this in the next episode to make them fire and whatnot but that's all we need that that's all we should have to do i should say to make him look at us so we'll have him walk around and now he's looking at us and he is keeping his path. He slows down just a little bit, but that's okay. That's kind of normal. So, it he's obviously not very smart. And somehow we can dip out of his range and he doesn't immediately look at us too quickly for some reason and I don't know why. That's weird. He should stay looking at us. But Yeah, there's there's a little bug that I got to fix and I I need to fix that recoil. Wow. I I need to fix when I fire. Firing makes me look forward. No one's commented about this bug. So, I don't know Sometimes I've heard bugs where you just have to restart the project and that fix things. So maybe that's one of those things. But anyways, I've had that happen before and that's a little of the solution. Just restart the project. It's all good. So thank you so much for watching uh, the first part on how to make the awesome and cool, potentially cool. I mean, it's it's we haven't gotten there yet. Hold on, guys. <laughs> potentially an awesome coolness of the AI that we're going to make. But real quick, I'm just going to delete the HUD and I'm going to delete the gun. I'm going to do the ADM sites cam, compile that, save it up. But thank you once again so much for watching. If you liked, you can like. And thank you for subscribing, liking, and commenting, throwing in them suggestions. And if I screwed up or if there's something else that I can use to make the AI operate a little bit better that you already see that I've done wrong or something, Totally. Throw it in there, and I'll goof around with it or put in the suggestion that you said if you make it very specific uh, as to what node I should use instead of what I used. I am assuming someone's going to say something about this. I just have a feeling. Anyways, thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and watching this video. Hope you enjoyed so much, and I will see you guys in the next one.